Are you ready to transform your summer into an epic splash-tastic adventure? Say goodbye to wasteful, single-use water balloons and hello to the ultimate in reusable, eco-friendly fun with reusable water balloons. Check out the link in the video description to get yours on Amazon today. Beloved broadcaster David Hamilton, one of the great voices of BBC Radio 1 and Radio 2, and a successful TV presenter for Thames TV and others, has a very amiable reputation. However, perhaps we will think a little differently about him after his autobiography, David Hamilton's Long and Winding Road, is published next week as it reveals the jaw-dropping, untold inside story of his life, as a ladies' man. Hamilton, twice married, tells of a love affair with a prostitute, casual bunk-ups with housewives on the road and the dope-fueled dressing room sex which shocked This Is Your Life star Eamon Andrews who walked in on it. In his book, Hamilton talks fondly about his first wife Sheila, and his regrets about cheating on her with a co-presenter, Roz Early, which led to their separation in 1970. After he and Roz broke up, he had a high-profile love affair with Judge's daughter, Kathy McKinnon, but was then single from 1977 until he met his second, and current, wife Drina, in 1983. It was during this period that Hamilton says he fell in love with a prostitute named Mel. He recalls being at Mayfair Nightclub, the Bristol Suite, in around 1983 at the invitation of the owner, Leslie Kahn. Kahn explained over a glass of champagne that the customers bought the girls a bottle of champagne, no doubt very costly, and the girls kept them company at the table. If the girls liked the men, they could make their own financial arrangements to take the situation further. The house made the money on the champagne. Hamilton continues, Leslie invited one of the girls over to our table. She was stunning, and for the purposes of this story, we will call her Melanie. Over more house champagne, I told her that I found her attractive, but that I don't pay for sex. She suggests an arrangement as she is opening a pet shop in Surrey. She asked me how much I charged. I told her and then asked what her going rate was. She said, I reckon that's five to one. So you give me one, and I'll give you five. I must confess that on the way home I did wonder what I had let myself in for. I needn't have worried. We had a night of unbridled passion. In the morning, she asked to see my diary so that she could fix a date for the shop opening a few weeks ahead. Often she'd call me and say, Hi, it's Mel. It's collection time. I think I had collected four by the time I turned up and opened her shop. That's it, I thought. But no, she rang again and said, I still owe you one. On the morning after number five, I said goodbye to her on the doorstep. That's it, Mel, I said. We're all square. He says that Mel told him that she would like to see him in her spare time, for fun. He writes, I started seeing her regularly. One night we watched the film The Days of Wine and Roses with tears rolling down our cheeks. I could feel myself falling in love with her. It was then that I thought, how would I feel if I was in love with her and she was sleeping with other men through the week? Before I got in too deep, time to end the arrangement. By this time he was voted one of TV's biggest turn-ons behind Magnum star Tom Selleck and took advantage of the female interest when he was on the road with the variety show up for the cup, screened against the Generation Game in 1980. He writes, often at gigs I'd meet women who would say, where are you staying tonight? I would say either at a hotel or driving back to London. Some would say, oh, you don't want to do that. Why don't you stay at mine? I got to know women in every part of the country. Sometimes they'd be in touch ahead of a gig. I hear you're coming to town, do you want to stay at my place? A wonderful bonus, free accommodation. He adds, back in London I dated a couple of penthouse pets and an American air stewardess I met on a soccer tour to Florida. I met the actress Trudy Van Dorn, who invited me to see her in a West End show. Afterwards we went back to her place for what must have been the longest seduction ever. For hour after hour, she played me her Dory Previn records, some of which I found rather depressing. Finally at 6 a.m., we went to bed. Was it worth the wait? Of course. His dressing room encounter came in 1977 when Thames TV had a swap week with New York station WOR. A Randy researcher offered him a funny cigarette and wine and then took him to bed. We walked down the corridor to the number one dressing room. It was TH.